and welcome to another tutorial from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do my honeycomb background on this double page spread from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Now I did this double page spread oh, ages ago, I think it was um, sort of towards the end of last year and I did it for Johanna Basford's colouring collaboration project so my original pages have gone off to Johanna in Scotland um, and I don't have them here anymore so I'll put a picture on screen of exactly what we're going to be trying to do today now I am not going to be doing the entire double page spread I'm going to be showing you how to colour the different elements from the background I'm going to be showing you some samples, how to do it step by step, and then if you want to, you can go ahead and do the whole lot. But I just don't have the strength to do the whole lot again, I hope you'll understand. Um, this all came about because a lovely lady called Claire Holloway decided to emulate my design in her book. And then she's posted it all over the groups and things like that, and Instagram and places like that. Um, and everyone is amazed at how well she has done it. I'm amazed, I'm honoured that she would want to do that in her book, which is very, very precious to her. Um, and everyone was asking Claire if she would do a tutorial for it. And kindly enough, she said that she didn't think that that would be appropriate because obviously it was my design and um, she asked if I would do it. And everyone sort of seems to want this. So I thought that I would go ahead and do a tutorial. I'm not really sure why I didn't do a tutorial at the time, I think I was probably just honeycombed out, just completely drained with it because it did take a long, long time. But don't fear because this tutorial is actually really, really simple, just like everything else I do. It's just very, very time consuming. So if you've got the patience, you don't need the skill. The skill is just, it's easy. You just need time and patience. So I'm going to get on with it. What you will need for this tutorial, and if you look in all of the uh, links in the description, everything's going to be listed there that I'm using, so you can go and buy it um, if you need to. What you'll need is an A5 stencil of a honeycomb. So this I got from eBay. It's made of flexible plastic and it's A5 size and it's perfect for doing some nice honeycomb on the background of this book. It's not too big, it's not too small, the individual honeycombs are perfect. So you'll need one of those, you'll need a pencil and for the first part all you're going to have to do is literally just go around the template drawing out all of your different honeycombs which is actually easier than it looks. So we're going to start at the spine so you line up the edge of your stencil with the spine so we're getting a nice straight edge and making sure that you sort of hold it down on the honeycomb that you're doing because it does tend to sort of slide around. You could do that or you could put some washi tape around it if you wanted to. Using a pencil so that if we make a mistake we can always rub it out, you simply go around the outlines of the stencil like this. Just making sure that you're keeping hold of the stencil at all times and don't kind of go too far with it away from your holding hand otherwise it will start to move around. So just keeping it nice and tight on the page and you will end up with a beautiful very very simple honeycomb. Now obviously I'm not doing this freehand, I couldn't, it, I mean you know I do things that are quick and easy and, and take as much help as I can get basically. So. I thought it would be best to use a stencil but you can see how how quick it is as well now when you're coming up to text or the bees at the bottom all you have to do is just stop the honeycomb wherever you think it's appropriate so as you can see I've only done half here and you'll end up with something that looks like that just got that bit that I've missed there um, and when you're coming to the spine itself, it can get a little bit tricky, but all you've got to do is line up the ones you've already done so that you know that you're straight. And then just very carefully attempt to draw in the ones, oh, draw in the ones that are left and go straight up to that spine. Now, yes, it is a little bit fiddly, but it's just something that you've got to take your time with a little bit and make sure that you've got it right. So I'm just gonna do a few. And you'll end up with something like that and then you can match it on the other side if you wanted to do the whole spread like I did. Again, you just line up 
all of the ones you've already done and transfer the design onto the next page and try and make it line up as best you can, kind of like that. It's probably never going to be perfect because of the way the spine is, but it will look fine when you've done it. Okay, so when you've got that, that's your basic honeycomb stencil done and we're going to be looking at how to do the inside first so I'm going to be leaving the painting step until last. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you options for whatever coloured pencils you're using whether it be polychromos or prismacolor. Now as you can see at the top I've chosen four polychromo shades that you will need. It's cream, light yellow ochre, sanguine and Van Dyck, Van Dyck brown. The Prismacolor shades are Cream, Sand, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Ochre, Sienna Brown and Dark Brown. Now when I first did my page for Johanna, I used polychromos. I tried to convert these polychromos into Prismacolors, but for some reason the conversion just didn't turn out right. So I went to Claire Holloway and I asked her what um, colours she had used and she had converted what she thought I'd used into these colours because she, th she thought I'd actually used Prismacolors on the first one um, and these work out really perfectly so I'm going to be showing you both but just note that I did mine in polychromos. They are very similar, they're both super super effective and really easy so it doesn't really matter whichever one you've got and indeed if you do have other types of coloured pencil just try and do your best to match these swatches. Okay, so first of all I'm going to be showing you in the polychromos because that's what I used. And here I have all of my colours ready to go. So making sure we're nice and sharp. I'm going to go in with the Van Dyke Brown. Let's just choose any old one. In fact, let's zoom in so that you can see it even better. There we go. Let's go for this one. So I'm concentrating on the top half of the honeycomb. So I'm doing this, these two sides up to this point here, just making sure that we've got a nice crisp kind of edge. You don't have to be too, um, too precise because the gold will actually go over any mistakes that you've made anyway. But just as long as you've got that bit at the top there, and then we're going to just bring the brown down from that line. So I'm not pressing too hard, it's medium pressure and I'm kind of getting longer strokes as I come toward the two edges of the honeycomb and that is what kind of gives it that, that depth, that look as if it's sinking in and we're going into the honeycomb. So darkening it up a little bit and I, I try to use these kind of stroke marks. I like to keep these stroke marks in the design. I don't know why, it just seems, I like the texture of it. So once you've done that and you've got around about that much of the, um, it's a hexagon isn't it? Yeah, that much of it filled. You'll go to your next colour which is Sanguine and go straight over the edges of that Van Dyke brown and just pulling it out a little bit further longer at both sides, longer strokes. So it's kind of in a curve shape like this. And again, trying to keep the texture. So I'm just going a little bit harder over the edges of the Van Dyke Brown so that we're getting a nice smooth blend. Keeping those strokes nice and light. And when you've done that, you can move on to your next colour, which is the light yellow ochre. Let's move this out of the way. And exactly the same thing, you're going over the edges of the sanguine and sort of dragging down those strokes as you come down. like that. You can go a little bit harder over the edge of that sanguine to blend but as long as your strokes sort of become lighter as you're coming downwards so that they can blend into the next colour. Okay 
And then for your last colour with the polychromos, we're going to be using cream. And you can pretty much fill in the rest of the honeycomb now. And all of those colours should create a really nice gradiated blend so that you can actually get it to look as smooth as possible even though we're going from a really dark colour to a really light one in just four pencils. So just making sure that it's all filled in. You can go back in if you want and start again by deepening your colours. Totally up to you, but I think you'll agree that that looks fantastic as it is. It's a really, really simple technique that is absolutely just incredibly effective. I was amazed when I first did this uh, design how how much uh, people were you know just didn't think that they'd be, ever be able to do it and that I was some sort of artist but it's just it's just once you know how it's just simple it's it's just a matter of step by step so I don't want anyone to think that they can't do anything like this because it's just it's just a matter of practice. So I'm literally just going over it again with the colours. No skill required whatsoever. And that is your basic polychromos honeycomb. So once you've done all of those, you know how good it looks. I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but it does look really good. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna do one with the polychromos, so, uh, sorry, the Prisma colours, so that you can just see the difference. So I'll do this one up here. Now we're starting off, we've got a few more colours with this one because it takes um, a few more shades to get that blend for some reason. I don't know why because Prismas are normally really good at blending. Um, but yes, we've got a few more shades. So this is the dark brown doing exactly the same technique as we did before. So just outlining the top, making sure it's pretty crisp. And then trying to sort of make a curve shape so that our sides are longer. Okay, so once you have darkened up those edges, you can move on to your next colour, which is the Sienna Brown. Again, just going over the edges of the previous colour to blend and leaving some nice hazy blend lines for the next colour. Next one is Burnt Ochre. And then yellow ochre. After yellow ochre, we've got sand. So you're going to be left with a really small area now. You kind of need to gauge how thickly to do each band of colour so that you've got room. It's it's sort of um, something you've just got to try and gauge as you go. And once you've done that, your very final colour is cream, just to fill in that last bit. You can use cream to go over the entire thing to blend it out a bit if you want to, or you could use a colourless blender pencil or some sort of blending solution. I haven't tried that myself, I'm going to though, because it'll be really interesting to see how that works. But there you go, so you have a polychromos and a Prismacolor honeycomb, and they both look amazing, it just depends on your preference and what you've got to hand. Now for the lovely shiny gold bit. Okay, and zooming out a little bit. 
Now the paint that I use is called the Fine Tech or the Finitec paint in the colour um, Arabic. Ar <laughs> Arabic gold. I don't know what happened then. I just went all weird. Um, Arabic gold. Now you can get these in individual pans. You can get them in sets of six like this. Um, and I'll be leaving the links in the description. These are, are the best paints I've found for opacity. So they're really opaque. Um, they cover really well and they are super, super shiny. You can use anything you've got to hand. You can use... Um, gel pens if you want to you could use things like the starry colors by Gan Saitambi. um it's totally up to you whatever kind of gold shiny material that you've got to use go ahead and use it but i love using this uh, using these okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just dot a little bit of water onto the pan leave that for a sec and that will sort of start to melt the paint a bit and now the only other thing that I use is a very flat, quite thin paintbrush. So it's a squared off paintbrush. And this particular one is the Royal and Langnickel number no. six crafter's choice. So just in case you're looking for those particular brushes, they come in in different sets, but I'll leave the links below. So now that you've got the paint wet, we're going to cover our brush. And the thing to note with these particular paints is that you do not need much water. The more water you use, the less opaque it will be and you'll start to see a bit of a patchy effect. So try not to use too much water. Try and get it quite nice and thick on your brush. And then here's the quite time consuming part. So because you're using a flat edged brush, it should be pretty easy to go around all of the different honeycomb sections but you've still got to be quite careful so just keep adding bits of paint trying not to have too much water and you just keep going in this kind of motion the flat brush really really helps I don't think I could be so precise with a round brush and I'm just gonna go around these sections that we've already done now, let me just see if I can show you already how shiny these paints are. Can you see? So it goes from out of the light into the light. Super, super shiny. And if you do find that when you're looking at it in natural light and not under a spotlight, it looks a little bit patchy, you can go in and add a second layer, which is what I did with the one that I did for Johanna. Because I thought mm, it looks a little bit patchy unless you're looking at it under direct light. I didn't like that. I wanted it to look kind of perfect whether it was under direct light or whether it was just being looked at in a dim room. So I did do a couple of, a couple of layers. So you can do that after it's dry if you want to. But as you can see, the, the brush really, really makes it so much easier. And it is an absolutely incredible effect. The lightness of the gold and then the deepness of each section is what gives that 3D look. So th just the effectiveness of this and having that contrast there is what is what really makes it pop. So might need a slight bit more water in a second. Now when you come up to text and things like that, you can just square it off. So literally just do a straight line and square it off like that. You could sort of brush it in and make it look quite jagged and quite, you know, rough. That's totally up to you how you do it. But as you've hopefully seen through this tutorial, it's not a difficult thing to do. Please don't be put off by, you know, how it looks, thinking you'll never be able to do that. I hate hearing that because I know that everybody is capable of beautiful colouring. It just takes, um, it just takes step by step, I think, going through it and not being too rushed with your tutorials. I think that's what I've learned. So I really try and take everyone at sort of snail's pace because that's what I need when I'm following tutorials. I really want everything spelling out for me so that I've definitely got it and I don't have to sort of guess things and 
watch speed colorings where I've just totally missed set steps out. So I hope that you all find my tutorials easy to follow. I do try and make them as easy as possible because I love sharing things that I've learned. It's just amazing when I get tagged in photos of um, you know colour alongs or tutorials of mine that people have followed and they've done such an incredible job. So do tag me if you do any, any uh, pages like this. Believe me, I am not bothered in the slightest if every single one of you does this uh, honeycomb background on your ivy pages. I really just go for it. I really want you to be happy with your book. And I don't mind if you use my ideas, that is totally fine. That's what the colouring community is all about. It's all about sharing our skills and helping each other and having fun. Wouldn't mind if you put a little little link in there to this tutorial so everyone else can find it. But um, yeah, go for it. So that's all I'm going to do in the video because pretty much it's the same thing duplicated all over the page. But you know, it's just, it, I love how those colours inside the sections look really deep. It's almost like you could put your finger into each honeycomb. Absolutely love it. I really hope that you've enjoyed looking at this tutorial today. I hope you found it easy to understand and that you're going to have a go yourself and of course let me know. You can always send me pictures, tag me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I'm absolutely everywhere. <laughs> um, so you probably get sick of me pretty soon but um, here's the tutorial hope you've loved it once again here are the colors I'm sure you can pause it from earlier but there are the colors that I use any questions let me know in the comments please please give a thumbs up to this video if you love it that's the best thing you can do and of course subscribe to the channel thanks so much and I'll see you soon on color with Claire